The English poet, painter, and printmaker William Blake seems to me to be one of the most radical of Christian thinkers. He believed that what most people, even Christians, labeled with the names divine of Jesus and Jehovah is actually Satan. Much of his worldview can be found in his illustrations and illuminations. For example, this color printing he composed in 1795, God Judging Adam. The viewer may notice that God and Adam look virtually the same. God is clothed, Adam is not. Notice also Adam's missing arm relative to God. But both men look similar overall. There is also a gold tether that connects the two, running from God's hand to Adam's head. The horse, presumably upon which Adam must ride out of Eden, appears almost to be cut from the silhouette throne God sits on. The horse and the throne share similar colors, and the back legs of the horse seem to pop right out of the overall throne itself, as evidenced by the negative space left over. The throne God sits on, relative to the horse's back legs, seems almost to resemble a skull, similar to Frank Meshberger's suggested interpretations of Michelangelo's creation of Adam. The overall point of this piece, the message which unites all of these little data points, may be this. Adam is not a properly separate being from God, not ontologically at least. Looking just like God, and lacking clothes, yet bound together by a gold tether, and exiled on a horse ejected from God's own skull throne, Adam is God, displacing God's own self from God's own mind. In other words, it seems to me the overall message Blake wishes to convey is this. Adam is God having displaced himself from himself. This may be the beginning of an interesting Blakean theology, or perhaps more properly, a Blakean mythopoetic worldview. Sometimes Blake gets tamed and domesticated back into a politely Protestant Christianity by describing his characters as clunky biblical equivalents when their personalities unto themselves. For instance, Urizen often gets described as just God, such as in Blake's 1794 watercolor, The Ancient of Days when Urizen is not necessarily the worship-worthy god many think of when they hear that term. Rather, he is the personification of life's tendency to suffocate itself in structure and imposed order. This is to say nothing of Albion, an arguably far higher god than Urizen ever could be, Urizen being only a piece of Albion. In any event, knowing if there was a particular character Blake had in mind from his mythos would help with interpretation, but overall, this piece is a prime example of what makes Blake such an exciting thinker, even, perhaps especially, to those who may feel entirely burned out by the dry and domesticated religion of the modern mainstream, a sentiment with which I think Blake would very much empathize. Ultimately, we may be able to summarize this piece with a joke by the philosopher Slavoj Žižek. There is a nice joke about Jesus Christ. In order to relax after the arduous work of preaching and performing miracles, Jesus decided to take a short break on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. During a game of golf with one of his apostles, there was a difficult shot to be performed. Jesus did it badly, and the ball ended up in the water. So he did his usual trick. He walked on the water to the place where the ball was, reached down, and picked it up. When Jesus tried the same shot again, the apostle told him that this is a very difficult one. Only someone like Tiger Woods can do it. Jesus replied, what the hell, I'm the son of God. I can do what Tiger Woods can do and took another strike. The ball again landed in the water, so Jesus again took a walk on the surface of the water to retrieve it. At this point, a group of American tourists walked by, and one of them, observing what was going on, turned to the apostle and said, my God, who is this guy there? Does he think he's Jesus or what? The apostle replies, no, the jerk thinks he's Tiger Woods. This is how phantasmatic identification works. No one, not even God himself, is directly what he is. Everybody needs an external, decentered point of identification.